Today's video is brought to you by the letter I for interesting. There's something hiding along this river. In this video, we're gonna find out. Welcome everyone to a brand new adventure video. Behind me here is a place you may have seen in previous videos. That is the old boxcar frame that's sitting here in the middle of the water. It was once used as a type of bridge platform. It's also a pipe in the distance too that we've seen on earlier adventures. And I do have some company, none other than RJ78 Productions. And we've been here before. I've been here countless times, and I know along the water's edge, there's some things I spotted in the past, some things that look man-made, not completely natural, and I want to get a better look at them, so we're going to walk the river's edge, kind of border that side over there, and see what we can find. If you're curious just as much as I am, all you need to do is to come along with us. Currently standing on the boxcar, which is actually two frames here you can see it's double wide and looking upstream we got these columns here which originally we thought was for a type of train bridge but we confirmed it actually was for another pipe there are numerous pipes now that one that we see there actually runs along the side here and goes downstream up there there's numerous rock walls and where the pipe is cut right back here and it came across to the other side. Whatever reason, they did remove that. Now, I'm not going to show you that in detail because I did cover that in future videos. I'm sorry. I did cover that in previous videos. So if you want to get caught up as to what this area is like, what we learned about it, just check the description for the links to those videos. And if you need more confirmation, there is the knuckle coupler right there. It's actually well exposed now. Other times we've been here, at certain times it's been underwater, but that is pretty neat. And it looks like they poured concrete on top of the deck. found a steering wheel too. I should say I found it when I first arrived. It was underwater. It's really slimy and greasy and RJ thinks it's from a Mazda, like an 80s Mazda. But yeah, that was laying there. Another unusual find. So in just a few moments we're going to, as I explained, stay along the right hand side here. Now it's actually rather deep here, deep enough to actually jump and swim in. I'm not doing that today. It's actually on the cooler side. Water is a bit murky. We're going to follow the edge up around and we know it's going to take us to a reservoir. So between here and there, we don't know what we're going to find, but we're surely going to give it our best effort and share it with you. So you're not going to want to miss what possible findings we do encounter. So RJ made a good observation. On the other side, there is a whole nother coupler. This one is actually intact with the knuckle itself. It's locked in place, but it's intact. Making a little bit of progress, we are now on the other side of those columns or pillars. 
not sure if it's coming through on camera, but they're actually pointed, so they start at a point and fan out. That is to kind of help with debris washing down so that it doesn't really damage the main structure of it. And there's an RJ. Well, I guess we'll see him later. <laughs> Here's looking upstream. And I'm going to try to stay out of the water, at least in this area, because it's actually... I thought you were joking! I am trying to joke, but... <laughs> Never can tell with him. But yeah, it actually does get rather deep in certain areas here. Even right here, it'd be up close to our waist. So we're just going to kind of take it slow and easy, then it does shallow up on the other side over there. So I guess we'll... Uh... See which way is going to be best to navigate and see you somewhere, somewhere over there. I didn't make it very far. I'm kind of standing here on this precarious edge. Uh, the reason I brought you back is because we have some drippage and some orangeage. Looks like some iron oxidation just dripping right out. And I learned, and hopefully I have it correct, is that when it comes out and the bacteria eats it, that's the byproduct of it. It turns it orange. Also, could be acid mine drainage. I don't smell a sulfur smell, but it looks like iron oxidation is just coming right out of right out of that crevice and dripping down. And uh, standing right here, inching our way closer. Oh, a nice little reflection there too with the water. As you're watching too, feel free to pause the video right now, comment down below, tell me what things or items that you think we might find. I can give you one hint, we're definitely going to find some stone walls. But besides that, let me know if you think we'll find maybe foundations, more railroad ruins, random objects, and we'll see if you're right. If you are, then uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. You can see the overhang here, the rocks, and it uh, doesn't look all that safe. A lot of fractured rocks, broken pieces, and a lot more of the uh, orange stuff, although this one's more of a darker orange. But neat nonetheless. And I do spot a nice little patch there of carpet. Although it looks pretty beautiful, we now hit a challenge of sorts because it does get considerably deeper and we need to go around that. So we either have to retreat and climb up on top and go around or kind of cling to the side here and hope for the best. I don't know what we're going to do, but um, I, don't know, I guess we once we come up with a plan, we'll bring it back aboard and you can follow after us. So yeah, if you get your knee up in there, just try to stay, hold low on the tree. Get your other knee up, get your right hand up to this one. Up to where? To that tree right there, or if you can reach that. Yeah, it's a little tricky. A better spot so I hope they don't pull me down. <sighs> That's where I get my knee up. Hang on, don't pull. Just okay. give me some support. I'm going to get my leg up. There you go. And then you get your right foot up where that flat spot is. Yeah. Towards that tree. There you go. And then you grab that big one right there. There you yeah, go. I go up here. Yeah, I figured. I want to go take a look at this plate. 
He made it. <laughs> There's a lot of coal up here. Yeah, I saw that actually. I'm coming for you guys. I'm coming. <laughs> Whew. All right. Thanks to RJ for the helping hand. Literally, that was a little difficult, but at least we're on higher ground. All right. So that effort was required because below the pipe here, around the bend, it got significantly deeper. Yeah, I tried going. It was just too deep. But now we can make our way down and follow upstream. But here's a, a view I've never seen before from the other side. This is too much like work. I know, right? Nobody told me I was going to break a sweat today. Yeah, I'm like... Obviously, I'm joking. I love this kind of stuff. So we got to not go up there because that is private property. So we're going to make our way back down. I know I'm cutting in a lot here. We haven't made a whole lot of progress, but I also do want to show you what we are going through in order to produce this video. So with that being said, I'm going to definitely focus on some of the more important, exciting things, but oh, RJ will find that rather entertaining. And here you can hopefully see on camera, over there is the deeper channel. I can't even see the bottom. A bit shallower over here. But we're going to try to make our way right down there, and we'll go from there. So far, off to a pretty exciting start, though. So we made it safely across to the other side. We're back down by the water, as you can obviously tell. Looking back to where we started. And now we're going to be able to stay along the edge here. And it looks a bit easier. But I do have to say walking in this water is a bit tricky. The rocks are covered in a thick layer of like moss and algae. Super slippery. Like that brown coating that you see is basically almost like, um, like shag carpet. Your foot instantly slides right out like you're getting the rug pulled off from underneath you. But it looks much easier as we continue upstream here. Finally making some progress and spot it in the river here. I spy with my little eye two holes right there. So those were definitely drilled out at one time. And I don't think that was necessarily drilled right there. That rock probably got shifted from high waters possibly or the area being altered. But so far, we're encountering, at least in dry ground, there's a lot of spiders we see. Actually, right here, here's one. Yeah, these little spiders are just kind of sunning themselves on the rocks. There's some, looks like um, sheet metal or something just laying there on the side of the embankment. But where we're headed next is right along this side. I may or may not try to get out to that island, we'll see. But it does look rather interesting the farther we're going up. Just in case what, I lose it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, talk on your hand. Stay there and talk. All right. You, you guys ready for a ride? Oh. 
All right, after that little precarious maneuver there, teamwork. We're now on, I guess you can consider it an island because there's water on both sides. It's a big rocky outcrop here. And you can see there's a pretty definite water line. That's the normal level right there. But I'm sure this has been underwater in the past. This one explore a little bit before we continue on. If the water was clear, I would probably try to give you some underwater footage, but we're primarily uh, focusing on <clears throat> the dry land, dry parts. Oh, there's some hoses right there too. They got washed up and blocked there against that tree as a piece of foam and almost pipes from like a, not pipes, but hoses from like a pool. But I'm gonna try to make my way back over here somewhere. I think I can maybe cross over here, just do some leapfrogging. There's some deep holes here, which would be ideal for swimming if it was warmer and the water is clearer. So maybe in the future, specifically next summer, if you guys want to see me do that, if you want to see me come back and maybe swim some of these holes, give you some underwater footage, when you leave your comment, I want you to comment swim somewhere in your sentence or message or anything. If you want me to return in the summer to swim, comment swim. And I already see our next objects over here, some man-made items. So let's get over there and check them out. That's where I just came from. And it's not gonna be as easy as I thought. There is some larger gaps here. And the area I'm showing you is rather deep. That's probably over my head deep. So I'm gonna try, and I say try loosely, to make my way somewhere around here. I'm gonna keep you rolling, because if I fall, you're gonna fall. So let's give it a whirl. And we're going to do this as carefully as possible. All right, so far so good. All right, I think I could make it from here to there. And I should be, I don't know what he's doing, should be safe. Right. I'm gonna try to just walk through because it's kind of pointy. Ooh. All right, success. Now, obviously it's concrete. We can see some posts here. And I don't think these are the original locations. They're either pushed from up top or it got washed out from the water. But there's some over there as well. From here to here, it's maybe three feet. Oh, it looks like we got, there's a piece of railroad track right there. There's actually a heavy equipment tire, another railroad track, and a hood or a trunk lid. Some anchor bolts coming out. What this resembles to me is the base foundation for either a signal or a um, like a signal tower or a signal bridge. There's actually more of them right here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There might be an eighth one here. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it was a signal bridge. I'm thinking that's what it was. Oh, there's actually more of them too. Because up on top of here was the old Erie line. There 
are sections of it that are still there and I did cover it in a video a couple years ago. So I'll link that down below. But definitely supports for a tower of sorts. But there's a whole bunch of them here. Another piece of rail, another one there toppled over. So I'm thinking these were pushed down. That's my assumption. Made another discovery that nature has created. One of these craters. We've seen these at various locations, most recently upstream of the secret oasis. But those who were wondering how these are created, well, obviously it takes a long time, but what happens is little pebbles and sand get trapped in like a little indentation. As the water flows, it gets caught in like a whirlpool of sorts. And over, you know, however many hundreds of years, it just carves it out in almost a perfect circle every time. And now it's a collection of rocks. But yeah, that is created just by little stones and pebbles grinding away decade after decade. And that is the final result. Rather fascinating. I call them craters. I'm not sure there's an actual name for them. So there's the area we we're just checking out. All those supports, random pieces of rail. And coming up ahead, we have a little waterfall, which is going to be nice to check out and share that with you. But I do know there is more to see beyond that. Actually, I think it's just beyond that, kind of hidden by the trees right now. It's going to be one of the more prominent things I've been meaning to check out in person rather than from a distance up there. It's just a random rock there with a drill hole. And there are numerous ties. Oh, actually, I see a couple more things. Let's go up there right now. All right, so we got ties, railroad ties. And I'm not sure what that is. It looks like, well, that's attached to this. That's like a pole of sorts with like a, a bracket on it. And that one is attached to that large beam. That's larger than a railroad tie. That's a really big piece of treated lumber there. Oh, this is a uh, railroad track plate. So the track would lay right on top of here. And there's the spikes there. So that's what that is. So this is all, I should say all, but mostly some remnants and ruins from the old Erie line. There's even more right over here. Including, because it was known for carrying loaded coal cars, plenty of coal. Yes, this little area is a little, I guess you could say like a little capture area for things that were pushed over or washed down. But there's another railroad plate with a bent spike going through it. But it's going to get better, I promise you. There is something much larger just around the bend but first we'll get down there and get some natural sounds of that waterfall all right here we are as i got closer i made a discovery although i wasn't lying that is a little waterfall that is a man-made dam that is like poured stone and concrete and even some anchor rods support rods, whatever you want to call them, coming through it. I want to see if I can get closer, because right there it's exposed. But that is a 100% man-made little dam. Makes you wonder if they had a mill or something here. Maybe like a, a water wheel or a way to channel the water for a specific use. But that is 100% a man-made dam. Hopefully you can hear me. I can't get over there. It's just too rough and too deep. So I'm going to give you a view from here, but there's actually something rather unique I'm going to show you in just a moment, but I'm going to stay silent and let you take in this neat little area.
two more pieces of rail laying on the embankment here. But did you see what I was showing you? 100% confirmation. Okay. These are all planks of wood that are embedded in the ground to shoot the water towards the middle. So 100% this was altered and constructed for some reason. But since we're here, I think I'm gonna try to risk it. I'm gonna get you guys over there and show you the areas of that dam. I'm gonna try to at least, that's the plan. I can't go a whole lot closer. These rocks are really slick. I'm gonna crop it in to show you. That is concrete and stone. And there's a couple big rods coming out to kind of keep it in place. Probably served as rebar as well, but I think more of a support. Probably goes deep into the ground so it doesn't get pushed over. But that is a 100% man-made dam. And looking upstream, I do see something on the right-hand side up here, which is going to be our next focus. But this is a neat discovery. If you guys have any idea what you think this was constructed for, Feel free to comment down below. I'm thinking maybe they had a, a mill here, maybe for a water wheel, maybe to back up and make this water deeper here for suction of water, maybe for, you know, mines. It could be anything. But if you guys have any insight, would love to hear it. This is a lucky surprise. This is what I was trying to show you before that was bolted to that large piece of timber. And it's this thing right here and here's my hand for scale it's um kind of like 90 degrees with this you know flange going through the middle there's holes here for the bolts which are still going through and it's laying right next to another piece of rail there's so much cut rail here and they didn't repurpose it they just kind of chucked it over the side and that tree is pretty neat it looks like a pontoon on a pontoon boat coming out just to find gravity but yeah this was just laying here this one's not attached obviously but at least gives you a better idea as to what I was describing earlier today's video is brought to you by the letter I for interesting so RJ is unofficially on the injured list this is his second time hurting himself he got his ankle, this time he got his shin. I wasn't recording, but this was laying right here. And I jokingly said, get that out of my view. Well, he's determined to yank on it. And they came down full force and hit him in the shin. So I said, "Take, sit down and take a break. So while he's kind of taking it easy for a moment, I want to show you our next finding here, which is unique, but doesn't really explain much. But we do have a bottom layer of stacked stone. Above that, is really old concrete and you can tell because they basically have stones and little miniature boulders mixed into the concrete and mortar to kind of keep it you know tight but as to why it's here no explanation this looks like a large chunk of concrete right here too that may have broken off somewhere but you know you can see how close it is to the water i don't know what they could have used it for and i don't see anything on the other side as a type of bridge. But there is something up further I could see from here that I think there is something on both sides, possibly, definitely on one side, much larger than this. It's not too terribly big, but it's big enough. Yeah, if you wanna see, uh, maybe he got some footage of that hitting himself. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's gonna be okay. You just gotta make sure he uh, takes it easy from here on out. Gotta get him some protective gear. Otherwise, he can't come on any more adventures. He's a liability. But now we gotta find a way around here. If not, we're gonna go up on top here. This is a big undertaking, but hopefully you guys are enjoying it as much as we are. Well, I guess at the moment I'm enjoying it more than him since he's injured, but you know, just the way it goes. Sometimes you gotta roll the dice, but as long as he's able to walk out of here on his own two feet, 
then it's a successful day. Here we have a mixture of automotive and railroad. More tracks and it looks like the axle of a car. A really small car. There's like the pumpkin rear differential. Leaf springs are attached to it and the rails laying right on top of it. And there's another rail. But I missed it. There's a stamping right there on the uh, housing Ford. RJ thinks it's a 60s Ford. Well, it's rear wheel drive, so. I looked right at that and missed that, so. Up in the 70s. Later next to this plate here, I found a couple of little goodies. I call this a donut. It's like a ring to something. Spike and say, what flavor is it? a pipe. I think it's chocolate glazed. Oh, I was hoping it was Boston cream. I know. Those are my favorites. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's something. Here's some more JP Top Pocket Finds. These are really heavy pocket finds. That one's <laughs> probably that weighs 10 pounds. Like a... no, I wonder if like the insert of like a pipe, you know, like where the lid would be on top. It almost had that like a water main. Look of a, uh... Yeah, that could be actually. Yeah. Because there's a, this on here. Yeah. It's probably in the bolt. And this, this was laying like a, uh, right here. That's an elbow. Yeah. Pipe. Probably for uh, drain pipe. Or sink or something. Yeah, it's not one of these elbows. It's plate. that elbow. Oh, okay, here's the discovery. I think this is what they call an eye hook. So they drilled and inserted this here. So something was latched onto that. Maybe across the way there. This is serving as like a big anchor. Giant eye bolt here. Eye bolt, yeah, I call it an eye hook. That's it. Very neat. But if you look through the trees here, we got a pretty large stone wall. And I'm not certain if there's something on the other side. Once I get kind of closer, we'll pick up with that. Just came from where RJ is, staying high and dry over here. It's a big piece of metal sticking out of the embankment, but now we're directly across from that wall. Now, the wall is actually built upon the rock face there. So, normal, I guess you would maybe call that bedrock or that outcropping. So the wall doesn't start, it's like right there and goes upwards. And it's, the stone itself is definitely over 10 feet tall, but from the bottom to the top, Easily 20 feet. Now the thing I don't understand is why they did that other than a retaining wall. Was there something on top of that at one time? Was there a building or structure? We don't know. There's an active rail line up there obviously, but the old Erie line was behind us. Behind me actually. I thought maybe it was for a bridge, but I don't see anything over here resembling an abutment or any stacked stones unless it was altered and removed. But regardless, that's still standing tall and Kind of unique that it's on top of that rocky outcrop. There's the wall I was showing you just earlier, and we're kind of diagonal from it now. And here's remnants of a much larger wall. It looks like limestone blocks. And they're a different material, much larger than that. But it's somewhat hanging on. You can still see where it is stacked, but again, this line was altered in later years, so when they kind of pushed material to clear the land. The wall, I'm sure, toppled. But that one makes the, uh, makes me think of like a retaining wall. Here we have some high flood water debris. There's a plastic chair wedged in the tree here. Gonna take a seat somewhere, and lo and behold, here we go.
Well, I can tell you your first mistake. You sat on the back part, not the seat part. Really? Yeah, the hole was where the back would be. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. I was way off. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks to RJ. I now know how to sit in a chair. <laughs>
so many discarded pieces of rail. And there's just various pieces of, I think that's like a, I think that's a radiator. Or no, maybe a gas tank. Let's see what RJ says. Uh, maybe with that goose neck spout, might be a fuel tank. RJ, we need your expertise. Okay. Is it a fuel tank? This is a fuel tank. GM, by the looks of it, because it came out with a license plate behind the license plate. I think it might be a piece of it right there. And there's parts of the car right here. Oh. Yes, yeah, so I was right. At least I knew it was a fuel tank. Getting better with my uh, findings. Although RJ is a great help. He's able to kind of really pinpoint the accuracy of things. <laughs> so up there is the gas tank graveyard. Nice, calm section of water, rather deep. But look at it across. One of those craters are forming right there. It's actually doing what I was describing. It's circulating right there. So as time goes by, it's just going to keep making a larger and larger crater. That is really cool. It's actually, oh, there's a wall right there on top of it. Almost missed that. Yeah, that's one of the largest craters I've ever seen. Go to Arizona. Okay, in Pennsylvania, I mean. Smarty pants. <laughs> on this rock here, I found some rather unique uh, impressions. I can't think of the word offhand, I'll put it on the screen, but you can see, like there's a line here and there's little crisses and crosses and things like, almost like plant material was wedged in there. Finally coming across something significant as we look past this beautiful patch of nature. You see that straight ahead? That looks like two abutments of a bridge. Good sized ones as well. We're gonna get up there closer, explore the area a bit and see what it looks like, at least on the top of one of those sides. And I believe I know what's around the bend once we get past there, but let's focus on that bridge first. I just can't get over how gorgeous this spot is. We're in mid-September, but it's lush and green still. And all the water is not crystal clear. It's still a beautiful stretch of water. But those of you who are still watching, well, you are being rewarded because we're finally getting to some really cool, interesting stuff. Those who bailed already, well, that's their loss. Looks like we have the bridge itself that may have went across there. I'm early speculating. I think that's what it is. It kind of washed down a bit. And if that's the case, we may be able to determine if that was a road bridge or a rail bridge. Because there's an active line over there, the old Erie line and yard was up there. I knew those abutments were there. I had no idea about that. I'm going to find the uh, quickest, safest way over there. And then we'll continue on. Do a little, little bit of a... And we'll do a little bit of investigating. See if we could determine if that is indeed what it is. So as I was changing batteries, me and RJ were talking about what we're finding here. So the one thing we can confirm is that this is the bottom. These are more or less like plates that would have sat on the lip of the stone over there. And this we believe is two separate pieces that was cut. Because there's no end there, no end here. But it has the plates over there, like the the buffer there. You know what? I think I'm figuring this out. That steel that you're seeing there, that iron you're seeing there, mm -hmm. with the rivets and the piece that we saw down there, was probably attached underneath. There was a truss underneath. Okay. That's certainly possible. Because that's what these plates look like. The truss would have been connected, so these probably were two individual pieces just sitting on top of it. Yeah, that would make sense because there needed to be a support underneath it. So, what RJ just explained is we're finding various pieces of riveted metal there. He actually saw a piece in his video further downstream, and it's probably underneath these two, probably maybe attached somewhere here. They probably torched them as like a type of support. <laughs> now, this is the underneath of it. The only thing we can't confirm, although my speculation is that this is about the same width as rails, 
Although these are not rails, these are just I-beams. But he thinks it's just a concrete decking, which is possible. It could have been for, row, uh, for vehicles. I was thinking maybe it was a spur or a switch that came from the active line and went into the Erie yard here. I'm not sure if it's called the Erie yard, but there was a yard up here, a rail yard. I thought maybe it was a spur line or a switch. It could have just been an access road. Regardless, though, it is a neat finding, though. It's just laying here, literally in the river. But now I'm going to get up there and just give you a closer look at the abutment there, and we'll see if we get any idea on top if maybe there was rails or if it was just a roadway. So here's a side view. You can see the beams are encapsulated with concrete. These are like the, the bottom shoes, if you want to call them that. And underneath, it is just concrete. I don't see any rails or indentations or anything like that. So... I mean, between the both of us, I think we're pretty close to what this was. It was definitely a bridge. Definitely was located there. Pretty certainly had the metal structure support, like a, like a, what'd you call it? Like a trestle truss. of sorts? Truss bridge, yeah. But nothing showing rail. But we may be able to get a better picture once we're over there. Here's a different view. Now, under higher water conditions, that would be completely submerged. And here's just some scrap metal, which we believe was part of the truss structure. Now, as I was walking, I thought I came upon another random wheel, which we thought was like a flywheel in that old culvert system. This is a, um, a rim. And based on the look of it, it almost looks like a, like a Krager rim. RJ, I'm sure, could identify like with the year and color it was and what car it came from but yeah it's definitely like a rally wheel or a Krager I'd want to say maybe from the 70s or 80s I do remember them on maybe like Grand Prix and um, other kind of sports slash muscle cars in that era but we'll see what he thinks okay so he said it's a Pontiac wheel so I did say Grand Prix um, he's what do you say 60s 60s, 70s, I said 70s, 80s. So I was in the ballpark. He said similar to a Krager, but it'd be a factory Pontiac wheel. So here we are at the base of this impressive stone abutment. And you can see where the, I don't know if that's called calcite, it's just leaking, oozing out. But it's uh, a pretty impressive structure I was looking straight across this is actually a really deep body of water here I cannot see the bottom it's an area I wouldn't mind uh, make sure I don't slip here an area I wouldn't mind swimming in in the future but a couple things I want to point out which is even more impressive so if we look right here we have natural stone like a as I like to call the outcropping of rock so he basically built next to it with stone block and then built up on top of it upwards. So it's built upon next to and above a natural rock outcrop. And kind of the same thing over here. We have another rock outcrop here and they built right on top of it. All right. Oh, there's something colorful. Squirrel moment. I'm going to try to make my way up here and try and get on top of it. But there is some type of colored glass here. i got to get off here safely. Yeah, there's some... Looks like stained glass. Probably got washed down. And here's signs of a beaver. Beaver cut tree right here. Now we're gonna go up alongside of it here. There's a little cavity. Probably a snake den, so we're gonna keep moving past that. It was very hard to see anything. There's tons of thorns. Okay, got a little path here now. 
Okay, we're essentially on top of it. And you can see the lower section here where it would have went through. These are this kind of the walls. And behind it here, I'm gonna try to check a little bit. I don't wanna go too far, but as of right now, there's no easy telling of a, being a road or a rail bed. So here's the lip right here. So the bridge that we saw laying in the water would have been right on top of here. And those shoes would have been laying somewhere in this area. I know it's really hard to see with all the overgrowth, but I'm doing the best I can to show you. I was just about to head off, but I did find a rather ancient relic, something that you don't see all that often in the wild. Any idea what it is? Dun 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 dun! A Nike flip flop or sandal. Now, the question is how did that get there? Is that from really high floodwaters or did someone place it there? You decide. Oh, well, looks like we have reached the end, at least for this journey. Now, obviously the water does keep going. It's coming from a reservoir that is active. So we're not gonna go any further to cause any problems or concerns with that. So this down tree, is kind of our stopping gate saying, do not go any further. Honestly, I don't think there is anything further to see other than what we've documented already. So those of you who did I think I got some spider webs on me. Those of you who did comment earlier stating what you think we might find, were you correct? Maybe some of you were, maybe some of you weren't. Finding the remnants of that bridge, whether it's just the road bridge or rail bridge, was a great find. I did not expect to find that. Only knew about the abutments, but it's just laying in the water. Water is low enough, and it turned out to be a nice little surprise discovery. Along the way, though, I'm sure he was having a blast because he found numerous car parts, cars, all the sorts, it was like 
kid in the candy store, and he's able to identify 99% of them. So, see, he's got to have those fine details in there. But make sure to check out his video to see what he showed that I missed, vice versa, and also the details on those cars and car parts that we did find. Also, a lot of top pocket finds too, but our pockets are just weighted down the way it is. So, you have the letter I. Is that a bottomless pocket? Down there somewhere. I approve. Yeah, so the video is presented by the letter I. And he's taking it home with him. I do want to, number one, and I say it a lot, but I mean it today, thank him for coming along because you definitely saved me more than one occasion of pulling up that hillside and just allowing me to traverse safely. And although he did hurt himself, he is still standing on two feet and he'll live to explore another day. Although I couldn't help him, I was at least looking out for him. If anything was to happen, I was here, vice versa. Because I originally was going to come here and do this myself, and I'm glad I didn't because it was much more difficult in some areas than I imagined. So, With that being said, I think I rambled enough. I'd love to hear any additional feedback you guys have. If you want to see more adventures like this one, down below in the description has all the information I talked about earlier. And I think we're going to maybe try to check out one other place while we're in the area. So you may or may not see the same shirts in another upcoming video although we didn't find any toys very disappointing we found everything but toys white wall tires gas tank oh, graveyard bridges square body Chevy rails everything but toys but win some you lose some anyways guys take care thanks for watching and until next time we'll see you real soon in the next video